Time for a little politics this Christmas Eve. And have you seen this man? Not me, but him. Right there. It's been a rough couple of months for Willard Mitt Romney. First, he loses the election to President Obama. Then he turns up in the locker room of boxer Manny Pacquiao before his big fight a few weeks ago, laughing about how he lost. And a few minutes after that, Pacquiao got knocked out. And now Mitt's eldest son is talking to reporters, tag Romney, telling the Boston Globe his father, quote, wanted to be president less than anyone I've met in my life. He had no desire to run. Quote, if he could have found someone else to take his place, he would have been ecstatic to step aside. He is a very private person who loves his family deeply. He doesn't love the attention. Do we believe this? Uh, wow, it's going to be an interesting Christmas dinner at the Romney House. Um, I always suspected, and many of us suspected, that he, he wanted to be the nominee but didn't, and wanted to be president, but didn't want to do what was needed to become president. Uh, but this is... Um, Wow, I don't. You think he, I got nothing? Rationalize <laughs> either. Either his is his son of age to drink. Uh, it, well, yeah, but he's Mormon, so he doesn't. Oh, okay, so he does. Well, we heard. We think. We right, think. We'll right. get to that. Okay, right. We'll get to that one. But anyway, this is the best spin I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> you don't run for president. I mean, do you understand the desire that it takes? All those people in your faces, in your face every day, month after month after month, the begging, the raising, the money, the going all over the country, you're tired again, uh, all it, day long. It, it, it's about the internal politics and an internal conversation to the Republican Party, which is they didn't want a Santorum, they right. didn't want a Gingrich, they didn't want a Perry. I don't, I don't know who they want. Apparently and, who and, they got and, and didn't want it. I have one question for his son. If your dad did not want to be president, why did he change who he was about five times to get the nomination? And if, if he didn't want to be president, mm -hmm. why didn't you run on principle and stay the moderate that you were in Massachusetts? Why did you change and run away from health care and run away from everything else if you didn't want to be president? Michael, the part that caught me is the uh, he doesn't love the attention. You've worked with a number of candidates. You have to have a bit of an ego to do this, right? We like to say it's glandular. It's, it's, um, they, they love the attention and they love to hate the attention. Um, right. they're, they're public people who say they want their privacy, right. and that's fine. That's just how they're wired. It's, it's just what goes on. But this is, this is filtered through a sun. All right. Next up, the return of the guy who's given the Appalachian Trail more publicity than Joe Appalachian. Not that that person exists. Former South Carolina Governor Mark Sanford is reportedly considering another run for Congress. Sanford served in the House before becoming governor. You'll recall he resigned after he went missing, telling people he was hiking the Appalachian Trail and was later found to have used state money to fly to Argentina to visit his mistress. A couple of spins. Sanford was later divorced and is now engaged to his Argentinian paramour. Oh, and his ex-wife Jenny is also considering a run for that very same House seat as a political reporter, if we could make that happen and have the uh, ex-husband and ex-wife run against each other. Uh, is it, I mean, we've had some political recoveries, some, mm -hmm. some returns to public life. Is it possible, you think, for Mark Sanford? It's always the lying that gets you. It's not the extramarital affair. It's, it's not even the public corruption sometimes. It's the lying. Um, it's the lying that will always get you. I, I don't see how you can return to Congress, but... Who, who knows? Who knows? It's, it's not just the liar that he went missing. He used state money to do it. Mm -hmm. And, oh, by the way, his ex-wife may be in the race with him. I mean, that's... And what about those conservative family values? And That's a, that's a fair point. It's, Michael, somebody who's shamed publicly, a, a, mm -hmm. a politician who uh, goes through something like this, is what's, what's the game plan for getting back into it? Is there one? No, I, I really don't think there is. Not in today's 24-hour news cycle and hyperactive media culture with uh, the internet and blogs and email lists. I don't see it as reasonable. But the way that they do it is you say you're sorry, there's attrition, you apologize, mm -hmm. and you act like it never happened, and you keep on going, and you, you apologize. You keep apologizing, and you keep going. Maybe he could be ambassador to Argentina under a Republican president. That's that, a great job. It seems like he's it. got a great relationship with the Argent Beautiful right, country. Moving on, Sanford was a family values conservative. So too, another GOP lawmaker in the news tonight. Idaho Republican Senator Mike Crapo was arrested in Northern Virginia early Sunday morning, charged with DUI. Police say his blood alcohol level was 0.11% when he ran a red light. Crapo, not only a family values Republican, he is also a Mormon. Alcohol consumption is not allowed in the Mormon church. And Crapo has said repeatedly he abstains from alcohol consumption. He is not challenging the charges, at least thus far. Now, putting aside the Mormon element of all of this, should he resign from the Senate? No, this, this is up to the voters. The voters need to decide whether or not um, this sort of behavior um, and this sort of um, duplicity 
I mean, hypocrisy is something that they could stomach. I don't th know that he needs to resign. He needs to deal with a criminal uh, culpability and responsibility and charges and then, you know, make his case to the voters. He won't be resigning. <laughs> That's not going to happen. Let me, let me, all right, let me, let me pick at this a little further mm -hmm. because DUI is not a, a crime just against yourself. You're putting all sorts of other lives at risk. Yeah. Uh, and so a, a lawmaker who puts other people's lives at risk shouldn't have to give up his job? You know, if, if it's something they present to the voters. I, I really do believe that um, they need to run on the wholeness of their record um, and decide if the voters, and the voters need to decide whether or not they want this person representing them anymore. It, 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 it sounds weird. Uh, when I listen to myself say it, I understand the, <laughs> the awkwardness of it, but um, there are some criminal violations um, that require your immediate resignation and removal from office. And I don't think this is one yeah, and I don't think this is one of them, so it really is up to the voters. There's a part of me that thinks, you know, if this was a Democrat, the calls from the Republicans for him to resign or mm -hmm. be drummed out would be never ending. Not hearing that from the from the Democrats go around. Is there a is there a difference? I, I think we are in a unique position right now. Uh, it's the end of the year. The, we're dealing with some national tragedies. There are other very big issues going on. Um, he didn't hit anybody. There was no accident. He got pulled over, thankfully, after running a red light and was stopped from driving anymore before something bad could happen. I think there are more important and bigger things. Not more important, bigger things going on. Fair enough. We will leave it there. Up next, he spent 17 years in prison for a crime he did not commit. But tonight, Eric Glisson is getting ready for Christmas at home. He joins us live next here on RFL.